20 years. He thought, I, he said, I thought you was 20 years old. <laughs> and then I said, how old do you think Pastor Rosell is? He said, well, he look like he about 30 or 40 years old. <laughs> means we have a new sermon series. Amen. Amen. This month we're going to be talking about God Jesus. Do you got Jesus? That's, that's, that's correct English. God Jesus. Amen. But today we're going to be coming from the book of Acts. Acts chapter 9. And I want you to read your hearing a couple of verses. And we're not going to be just here, but we're going to be going through Paul's life in the book of Acts. This is going to be one of our scriptures. But, the, but Acts 9, 23 through 25, it says this. Now after many days were passed, the Jews plotted to kill him, Paul. But their plot became known to Saul. They watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then the disciples took him by night and led him down through the wall in a large basket. Amen. You may be seated. I want to use for a subject today, overcoming uncertainty. Overcoming uncertainty. Now, now, now this word, it may not be for y'all. I'm going to preach to myself today. Because how do you know life is like a box of chocolates? You never know what you're going to get. When you open that box of chocolate, you can get some peanut clusters. All right. You can get some with some just dark chocolate in it, some milk chocolate in it. Uh, you can get some with just some caramel in it, but you can never know what you're going to get out of life. Life is full of uncertainty. And somebody here today, you're trying to figure out what is my next move? Do I supposed to be in this relationship? Do I supposed to make this business venture? What, what am I supposed to do about my finances? Let me tell you, this past week, I just felt like I just needed a redo. Uh, Thursday was one of one of the worst of the, of the week, and yesterday, uh, Thursday, I, I, I get to my house and I lay down. I get a call from one of my tenants that the, the the house is flooded. Just got home. I get there and the pipe had burst behind the wall, and and I'm there two or three hours. Can't get the water from stop from can't get it stop. So I had to run to town, run to Morocco, try to get some parts. On my way to Morocco, a tire blew out. And I said, God, what? am I going wrong? Just everything seemed to be going wrong. Yep, yesterday, uh, me and Pastor Paul said we come to a funeral here. We're on our way to a funeral. We get a call from the rental property in Brew, our Grace House, and, and, and they tell us that, that, that they have a leak and a pipe is burst. And we, and we get there, and we get in the house. We get the thing. We got everything. And we don't have all our parts. We go back to the store. We come back to the house. There's something else wrong with it. Go back to the store. Come back to the house. Something else wrong with it. And we're just not in the house. Everything seems to be going wrong. And we're saying, what is going on? Somewhere on the journey called life, you're going to run into uncertainty. Where you ask the question, God, What's going on? Now, 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 why do I feel like I'm in a stuck situation? And sometimes you say, God, I, I just need a little light. Show me a little light at the end of the tunnel. Give me a little hope. God, show me something. I want to let you know God is not the author of confusion. If God is not the author of confusion, guess who is? Satan. And the Bible said that Satan desires to sift you like wheat. That means to shake you violently. Satan, he, if he had his chance, after he would just shake you until he does nothing else for you to do. Satan, he wants to kill you. He wants to destroy you. And how he does it is he distracts us from our purpose. 
He distorts things when you begin to question what's going on. He brings discouragement to you where you, you feel like there's no hope. He, he brings disappointment to your life. You just feel like you're just disappointed. God, why am I I'm not married and I'm 40 years old? God, why am I not further along in life? He knows how to de de deplete you. The energy that you just, I, I'm just tired. I'm just, I'm tired of the pressure. The pressure is too much. God, I need a release. God, I need a break. I, I can just get this thing, just, just break it, God. I just came to give you some encouragement today. How do we overcome uncertainty? That's a good question, y'all. How do we overcome the uncertainties of life when life happens to us? The first thing Paul shows us in the text is that you need to put some friends on it. But Paul, we, we, we got to understand who Paul is. Paul uh, has just been knocked off his horse. Not in the text, and God has blinded Paul. Because Paul was on his way to persecute some Christians. And on his way there, God knocks him off his horse and blinds him and basically tells him, I got some work for you to do. And when he gets to the next city, God used a brother to lay some hands on him, and, and he was able to see. And Paul went from killing, persecuting Christians to preaching the gospel. He has just preached his first sermon. And everybody is talking about Saul preaching. That's, that's how folk do us. Paul was one Saul. And some folk only remember your Saul. That they don't remember the new man, the new woman that you are, the changed person that you are. He's preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he's preaching it so good. That they said, we gotta kill this brother. And as they plot to kill Jesus, I mean kill Paul, he has some friends. They stuck him to the gates at night. They had walls that, that surrounded the city. And they placed him in a basket. And they began to lure him down. Now, now, those are some good friends. Because some friends would say, let him die. He, he did too much attention. He, he preached better than me. She, she, she sang better than me. Some friends want to see you be destroyed. But he had some good friends that placed him in a basket and extended a rope. And I came to tell you, if you're going to overcome the uncertainties of life, you got to have some friends to extend the rope to you. It is Pentecost. Uh, and when we talk about Jesus, and we get excited and you know, especially in the Baptist world, we say he died, but he got up early Sunday morning, and that's where a lot of, a lot of preachers we stop right there. I'm so glad he didn't stop right there. Right. Yeah, Pastor Paul's has said it that he sent us a helper. But as he is going to meet with his disciples after he had gotten up, the disciples they had, they had heard that Jesus had died. Uh, they heard that he had been crucified, and they are afraid. They're in the upper room. They are afraid. They're terrified for their lives. And Jesus just goes through the door. Now, he didn't open the door. He just walks through the door. Y'all don't no, no, miss this. He did not open the door. He walks through the door. All right. That'll preach all by itself. Sometimes you feel like you're boxed up. They're dealing with the uncertainties of life. They don't know what's going what's to happen next. They, they just know that the Jesus that they followed for three years, he is now dead. And Jesus walks through through the door. Right. Whenever you feel like you're boxed up, just know that Jesus at any moment, he can walk through your door. <laughs> what a friend we have in Jesus. Yeah. Paul had some friends that extended the rope to him. They weren't jealous of him. They weren't envious of him. But they carried enough for that they extended the rope. The second thing, how we overcome a surgery. You put some friends on, but also you put some faith on it. All right, all right. We're talking about the books of Acts, and we did it with Paul. In Acts chapter 14, verse 8, it says, And in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb. 
who had never walked. This man heard Paul speaking. Paul observing him, seeing that he had faith to be healed. Paul said, stand up, stand up straight. And the brother leaped up and started walking. My God, my God. Whenever there's uncertainty in life, you got to put some faith on it. Can I tell you, faith activates heaven. All right. Heaven responds to your faith. I, I remember when I was overseas and uh, my, when I was, I got to Korea, uh, you know, they speak Korean, I speak English. And I get there and I'm trying to speak English to them, saying, I need a taxi or take me to this place. And nobody is responding to me because they speak Korean and I speak English. We have two different languages. But somebody who knew English began to speak on my behalf in Korean to the man and told him that I needed a taxi. And the man stopped what he's doing and he said, where you need to go? And the translator translated where I needed to go. And he responded because he heard his language. Y'all missed it. See, many of us, we are speaking a language that heaven cannot respond to. What's your language? Worry. What's your language? Stress. What's your language? Anger. What's your language? Fear. And God said, I don't respond to fear. I respond to faith. So James said it like this. He says, but let him ask in faith, not wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave in the sea driven by the wind, tossed and driven. But let not that man think he can receive anything from the Lord. A double-minded man is in, unstable in all his ways. My God. you got to put faith on it. Faith isn't just talking. Faith is walking. When Paul told the man to get up, stand up, if the man had never stood up, he would have never got his healing. The man who had never walked, he's been laying from birth, he stood up and started walking. Because he responded to faith. A moment of transparency. Y'all know I preach my life, I preach my uh, stories. And, uh, if, if, you, if you come across me, something happened from me, I'm going to preach it. Because I believe God, he spoke in parables. But I, something happened to me. I, I need to go buy some tires. And I went to the store, Firestone, and I, and I get there, and I get ready to pay for my tires. The tires are like $1,800. I get ready to pay for them. My man said, he said, uh, he said, uh, how about you just get a Firestone card? He said, you know, it's interest-free for six months. You just pay it off in six months. No interest. That sounds good. I ain't going to pay the $1,800 right now anyway. <laughs> and uh, he said, all right, I signed you up. You're good to go. He said, uh, 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 can we sign you up for paperless so we got to um, send you a bill? I said, yeah. You know, gave my email address. But lo and behold, uh, two months go by, and I forgot that I even bought these tires on this credit card. <laughs> And, I, and I, you know how you look on your, uh, they send you your, your credit score uh, on all your, your bank accounts and stuff like that. And I looked at my credit score, it had dropped 100 points. And yeah, 100 points. <laughs> and I looked at my credit report, I'm like, what in the world has happened? Well, it was these tires from Firestone that I did not check my email for a bill because it's paperless. Now, I was in the process of buying a property, a house. So I go to the bank, and, I, and I'm thinking, like, Lord, they just, they ain't going to let me get no house. They ain't going to let me get nothing. My credit score is jacked up from the floor right now. And, and, and the Lord said, he said, just, just claim it. Speak faith on it. Y'all missed it. Come on. <laughs> but before I went into the bank, I went to the house. I said, it's mine. All right. And when I come back, it's mine. I, I walk in the bank, y'all. I sat down, and I'm talking to my banker. And uh, he said, uh. He said, Brandon, let me, uh, we got to pull your credit score and everything. He pulled my credit score. He said, whoo. He said, uh, your credit score is a little low now. But he said, don't worry about it. He said, you good. All right. Now, y'all miss that. Matter of fact, he said, he said, I, I got another property over here because he owns property. He said, I'm trying to sell this other property over here. He said, you want this one too? I said, two properties? All right, all right. He said, sign me up. <laughs> Credit was jacked up from the floor just because I, I didn't pay that bill. But God said, put some faith on it. I walked in there, I'm getting one property. I walked out with two properties. I 
Christianity, you got to put some Jesus on it. Whenever you look throughout the Bible, it says that when anybody came in contact with Jesus, they were changed. Their lives were changed. The woman with the issue of blood, one touch, she was made whole. The lame man, one word, he was made whole. Put Jesus on your situation. And I promise you, he'll make everything all right. Hallelujah. So God, today we thank you. We thank you for this word overcoming us. God, it is your promise that you gave to David in Psalms. When you said it won't be like this always. That you're going to perfect that thing in our lives. God, that's your word. That what we're going through is for our good. It's for our purpose, God. So God, today, we put you on this situation. We put worship, we put praise on it, God. God, we put faith on it. And God, we pray that you would surround us with some good friends that will extend a rope to us and help us and come alongside us to help us to get out of this situation. So God, we thank you. We're healed. We're delivered. God, we're dead free. God, everything that we've been praying for, we put faith on it. We honor you, God. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we can pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah.
that we may not bring damnation upon ourselves. God, there's anything that we've done, we confess it to you, God. Known and unknown, we repent, asking that you will forgive us, that you will wash us with that same blood that came from Calvary's cross. Do it, God. Now, God, we ask that you will bless these sacraments. And as we partake in it, God, help us to be reminded that it should have been us on that cross. But you did. It was love that kept you there. And while we were yet sinners, you died for us. So God, we commemorate you. We exalt you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 This time we want you entering into our community service. He doesn't tell us how often to do it, but he says, as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. This last supper with his disciples, we partake, we're partaking with Jesus today. He's here with us. Say, God, we thank you. We remember what you went through. I went there, but I remember today what you went through for us, that we might have access to heaven. We should all be on our way to hell. Should still be burning uh, incense and making sacrifices, but he became the ultimate sacrifice. We say thank you, God.
to discover a couple of new testaments. As often as you drink of this cup, you do remember me till I come again. And they drink all of it. So after the last supper, they went into the of olives. They saw a hymn. And our Savior was betrayed. He was beaten, he was battered, he was bruised. They hung him on a cross. They put him in a bar or two. But early Sunday morning, he got up. Now was somehow. But when all the power in his head. But that's not how the story is. Something that they play up. He said, I have a call the Holy Ghost. Anybody thank God for the Holy Ghost? Everybody remains standing. Come on, 